Scepter and you're tuned into another Overton Live tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at sub base, specifically how to make uh, patches in serum and also how to get it sitting in the mix correctly and the purpose of it throughout your tune. Now whilst we're all stuck inside in the UK I wanted to offer personal lessons as well. So for £10 I'll do a 30 minute private lesson over Skype or a video, whichever you'd rather. And you'll also get access to one of my previous projects that's been released so you'll be able to work through a project and hopefully see where you might be falling back in certain areas. And then lastly you'll get a template and sample pack of my unreleased um, modular bass and analog bass pack which has 20 bass samples and 20 atmospheres in it. Um, to get hold of that, just drop me a message on Instagram and we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get into the lesson. Cool, so here we are in Ted Overton Live. I've switched to a studio mic, so hopefully you guys can hear me a bit better uh, than in the last couple of videos. So as always, I'll play you through the project first. Cool, so when writing this, I've really tried to keep it as stripped back as possible to demonstrate uh, what the sub does within a tune and why it's there. I've used as little mid-range uh, as possible. So if we take a look at the serum patch first, because I guess that's what a lot of you guys are gonna be interested in. Uh, it's a very simple patch. Again, I've added some bits later on, but currently these are all turned off. Um, so I've got a sine wave on direct out which means it's not going through any of the effect effects even when they are turned on uh, and I've got two uh, sine waves which one is FMing the other so I've got FM from A on about 50% uh, just there so if we turn that off first of all actually if I turn the filter off And then without the FM. So you can hear basically just a clean scythe, scythe, sign with a bit of movement. Now the movement is coming uh, from the detuning. So I've got one that is 50, not even, I guess it's sense, uh, down, detuned from the other. And that's what's giving the, the slow oscillation between the two. Now the FM is just adding some extra harmonics. Uh, which I then take away with a filter, but it definitely does add some character. So you could even have it like that without the filter. It's not, not too bad, not too harsh. So then MG Low Pass 24, just to get those top end harmonics away. If we have a look on a uh, analyzer, this is span, it's free by the way, just get it from Plugin Boutique. So there's a fundamental and the harmonics that are being added by the FM. So we can see without the FM it is just the fundamental by itself. Put the FM back up. Now really the filter, the purpose is to get rid of these harmonics really above 200 hertz uh, which is exactly what it's doing uh, because around here it starts to get a bit nasally uh, which isn't really desirable for sub because we're not going to be distorting it too much the cleaner and smoother we can keep it in the first place but just adding those first two harmonics gives it the extra presence especially on smaller sets of speakers so that really is it. I'm just looking if I've done anything else on that main page. No, there's a pitch down on that envelope. Yeah, on the master tuning. Now it's very kind of gradual but it just creates a little bit more interest right at the beginning, especially if you're having it hit on beat one. It's nice to have the sub bend down 
uh, and feel like you're sweeping into the phrase of the of the tune or the phrase of the bar. So the effects uh, are on there, but they're not really. It's very minimal. I think to be honest, it's better without. Now we could modulate that low pass filter as well if we wanted some extra movement, but it really depends on what you want to do, uh, what style you want your tune to be, because this it's more, even though it doesn't have a standard brake pattern, it's more of a roller uh, style with very almost constant sub going throughout. Uh, the track whereas if you had lots of mid-range edits you probably have shorter uh, sub length notes that then play like a call and answer between uh, the mid-range and the sub but with this we just want it as a constant weight throughout the tune <laughs> So I've resampled that to the track above and then I've just put an erosion on there, but quite a low frequency, only on 3K, whereas usually uh, I would have it quite quite a bit higher. If we listen to that soloed. I wanted that kind of low, lower tone of presence in it rather than it being a really sizzly top end. Um, which as I've said before it's also a cool thing to automate so what we could do is automate the amount like that now you could have them change uh, for each section but for the moment it's not too important just add that to a new automation lane and then have the frequency change as well kind of doing the opposite you could have more interesting movements Ooh. more interesting movements but you know this is only for for demonstration And it does change uh, how interesting your tune is over time, even subtle, subtle changes like that. Um, so in terms of mixing it uh, into your track at the moment, as you can see, there is literally nothing on there except from erosion. Uh, and I've done that so we can do it as part of the process. So if we just listen to the drums by themselves and have a look at an analyzer and see where, where the kick is sitting. Oh. So the fundamental is around 40 hertz. The second kick is actually lower, uh, but we'll pay attention to the first one for now. So our sub is also sitting exactly there. Now, to be honest, to my ears straight away, it doesn't the kick and the sub don't sound like they're conflicting too much. So it's not really necessary all the time to do a 100% side chain uh, and cut all of your sub out every time you kick kicks because it depends on where the characterful parts of the kick are sitting. So sometimes you can just get away with low cutting your kick quite a lot and then cutting small sections um, of your sub out uh, so say the kick had a lot of low end frequency in it, what we could do is just uh, trim that section off where the kick is kicking, this, this red line across here, and do that. Bit of overkill. 
and you can also create quite a nice side chain effect uh, from doing that as well. Sorry. like that basically and do it for your whole uh, section and then you can just copy it across from there so that's one way of doing it um, which also eliminates pops and clicks from doing it with a compressor because sometimes a compressor will add artifacts that you don't really want. Um, another cool plugin which I use quite a lot, well I use it on every track now, is uh, Duck by Devious Machines. And this is a volume envelope but it has a sidechain uh, function in it as well. So if we select uh, main kick change it to sidechain mode and then say show sidechain on graph we can see the kick come up on here so you can create a really nice uh, volume envelope for when your kick is kicking and obviously you can be really accurate with it because you can see exactly the shape of the kick as well so I'd probably do something like that normally so just take away the amount that you need to uh, so it sounds more natural unless you're going for a really heavily sidechain sound in which case you know do that that's cool as well Uh, and the nice thing about this as well is, you know, if I change the pattern of the break or move some kicks around or whatever, I haven't got to go and recut my sub up again because uh, that can become a bit of a pain. That said, I have actually come up with some pretty good ideas by cutting the sub up in one pattern, one break pattern, and then changing the break pattern and leaving the sub the way it was. Uh, and you get like a syncopation between the kick and the breaks in the sub. So that can be cool sometimes as well. Um, so taking this to like the next stage if you say this was your finished tune and you're limiting it and you want to get some more volume out of it if we have a look at it with span as well we'll just loop this beginning bit so it's not changing so if we take this this first part so as always uh, I've got a mid side cut in the mastering chain I try not to have too much on the mastering chain these days uh, mainly because the less you have the easier it is to gain the same results uh, because the more complex something is when you change one dial or one parameter uh, slightly it can really change the end sound too much like exactly what we do with building distortion chains except from um, you don't really want to have the same uh, process on your master chain because you may make something that sounds good or you're happy with at some point but it's hard to recreate so I've just got a mid side cut there we have the analyzer afterwards I'll tell you what we'll just use um, Pro Q is analyzer. So at the moment, I've got next to no uh, limiting happening. Usually, I would bus the kick and the sub uh, together, set set the output in parallel, and then just squash the kick and the bass together first. Sorry, not parallel. Um, to a separate output of just those two, squash the kick and bass together first. Um, but what we'll do is put a multi-band uh, dynamics on instead. So the kick 
is sorry the bass sorry is roughly minus 2 db i guess minus 2 maybe minus 1 and we'll have a look at how loud the kick is uh, as well so first of all you always kind of want to be able to get your uh, levels as good as you can before you start squashing stuff together um, so the kick is a bit quieter so what we'll do is just bring the sub down a little bit uh, first of all let's bring that down maybe 2 db And then I realise this window is probably getting a little bit complicated. We can get rid of get rid of duck now. Uh, and then we'll get a pro Q and put it just before the multiband dynamics and create a low cut. Uh, sorry, a low pass. So we can just hear. It's kind of like soloing uh, the bottom part. So really, that doesn't sound like uh, it's not sitting well together. It sounds quite nice. So at the moment, we just want to make the uh, change between the kick and the sub a bit smoother. So we'll do that with a bit of compression. So move the EQ to after the compressor now. And it's important you do that because what the compressor uh, can hear or see, whatever you want to call it, will affect how the compressor works as a whole. So if you're compressing something when it's band passed or low pass or high pass, whatever, when you allow, allow full frequency into that compressor again, it may behave differently. So if you are going to use this um, technique, then make sure the EQ is after. So minus 18 dB on threshold. We don't want too fast an attack because I don't want it to cut the uh, transient off the kick. So if you pull the threshold all the way down, it's basically just a limiter. Just soften the ratio a little bit. Awesome. If you're listening on a phone uh, at the moment, then obviously try again with headphones because you probably won't be able to hear much of this. So that's without the compressor. With and without. Awesome. So we'll leave that on there. Get rid of this secondary EQ. And then we'll start to bring the limiter down and we'll see kind of what the limiter is reacting to first. So it is still uh, clipping the kicks. Well, not clipping the kicks, but limiting the kicks. But it doesn't sound bad to me at all. I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, overall volume as well of minus four, minus five RMS uh, is not bad at all. Awesome. 
So I don't really want to go too much uh, into the rest of kind of mastering techniques because it's it's not that important. It's just in terms of, of sub and getting it to sit in the mix. The lower frequencies are the really difficult ones to control a lot of the time. And the reason for that, uh, for me anyway, is it's harder to hear obviously what's happening down there. Um, and there's much more power in low frequencies than there is in high frequencies. And what I mean by that is in order to make a, and this is not accurate, so don't quote me, uh, in order to make a 40 hertz wave come out of your speakers, it it requires much more voltage or much more uh, power or watts, however you want to measure it, than it does to create, say, a 1K pop or a 1K snap. So depending on the wave, uh, and obviously lower frequency waves are much longer. Um, so, you know, it's harder to control that energy uh, in that area in respect to into the top side awesome so hopefully that clears up a few mysteries and helps you a little bit we'll just listen to it one more time with the mastering chain on And we can hear that the, the kick is nice and clear in between those sub notes and whilst the sub is hitting. So that's really what we want to aim for uh, and a good bit of weight throughout the tune without inconsistencies in the sub. Awesome. So I'll come say goodbye. Cool. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully that clears up a few mysteries to do with kicks and basses and balancing the low end of your tune. Really you want to work with just volume before you start applying any effects to get the best result in my opinion. So if you did want to go forward with the lessons as well and have access to the sample packs and project files, as I said before, just drop me a message either in the comments and I'll get back to you or hit me up on Instagram and we'll take it from there. Cool, I'll have a video up again next week. Thanks for watching.